Hi, my name is Stephen Mulek. I'm a chemistry teacher at Bronx Science. For elective day, let's talk a little bit about honors chemistry. Before I start anything, though, I do want to say I'm aware of the news. Uh, the discontinuation of the subject test by the College Board is very impactful for this course. This course was really developed gearing towards getting ready for that test. So now that it's gone, things might change. I'll tell you about what the course has been and a likely direction that we're going to continue in. It's basically, you know, if you remove that test, we might just do all the same things because the test was not required by Honors Chemistry. So I do want to say, like, this is what we've done. This might not be what we go forward with, but at least it's some information to help you make a decision. In terms of this course, uh, a little bit about you and a little bit about the course. You have not taken high school chemistry yet. This is supposed to be an introductory level course, but it's an introductory level course where you're looking for something a little more. Maybe you want a clearer picture of how atoms and molecules interact. Maybe you don't want to be bored by an, a regular uh, standard level introductory course. This is the right place for you if this fits. Uh, the course itself is basically thought of as Regents Plus. Every unit, there's either going to be a new topic, some new area that we explore, or we're going to take the current level of areas, the current amount of areas, and go more in depth into them. Because of this, we need to move at a faster pace. You can't do more work in the same amount of school year without moving faster, mostly because we're meeting the same as a Regents course, seven periods a week. So if you're worried about fitting things into your schedule, this might be a good choice for you. We have the same, you know, two doubles, three singles, one in lab, one in class. For the in-class work, a lot of times we will try and work in some extended problems instead of having another lesson. It's not a double lesson. A lot of times it's this open-ended thing where we get to explore something. Uh, and again, so that every time we're not spending class time on learning means that the time that we are spending on learning, we might have to move a little bit faster. It, it helps keep things interesting at the very least. Uh, in terms of the workload, again, you know, the mantra is Regents Plus. We do the same labs as the Regents course does, one lab a week. It's usually due the next day. Uh, however, there's the opportunity to take those labs and either remove some of the uh, scaffolding to make it more open-ended for you, or if there's an opportunity to do something, you know, tangentially related, but a little bit more interesting, Re Honors gives us the opportunity to take that step up from what you do in a Regents class. We do the same two exams per marking period that you expect out of every course at Bronx Science to uh, major assessments, but we do exams. Uh, the exams themselves contain more, about six questions more, so roughly 15 to 20 percent more than you would see in a Regents test, but it is in the same 40 minutes. Again, move fast. Um, in addition to moving a little bit faster, though, there are these higher level subject test style questions that have more open-endedness, five answer choices, and there's a different style that you're not used to seeing, these correct explanation questions. So to give you an example of what things might look like, uh, taking a look at this, you know, in a region style part two free response question, you get one number usually, you know, one prompt, a very clear what number you're going to be working with, and they're very clear about asking what they want at the end. For an honors level question, you're being asked two different answers here. You're given two pieces of information. These are both from the same unit, and it's a two-point question. So this is not something you typically see in a Regents course. There's also a lot less writing. Whether or not the writing is pertinent, there's definitely few, less prompting when it comes to a free response question. In terms of the Regents uh, and, and Honors multiple choice questions, the, uh, the Regents questions, a lot of times the structure is very well known and very clear and very expected. You get this, you know, some, no, some, no, no, some, 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 no, right? Like it's a permutation type thing. Uh, and then when it comes to these correct explanation questions, I wanted to include an example here. You get two statements. You have to evaluate whether they're true or false. And if they're both true, you also have to evaluate whether or not the second one correctly explains the first one. So there's a lot more thought involved in addition to moving more quickly. As a final thing, it's not to say that the entire honors test will be these harder questions. The goal of both Regents and Honors is to get you ready for the Regents exam in June. The Honors course also says we will look at more content with the expectation that you'll take the subject test, but now it's just the expectation that you want more from the Regents experience, but you still have to take the Regents in June. So the, the goal is to make sure you're ready for the Regents, but also much more well equipped to just be a scientist and so to hopefully make that Regents readiness more of an afterthought but we still do need to measure it and confirm it so you're ready. Hope to see you there.